God bless you. Um, preparing a precious Christmas. The Apostle John writes in 1 John 1 verse 3 he says, We proclaim this to you, what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. We give ourselves to celebrating love. We give ourselves to celebrating life, relationships, as defined by the Father God through His Son, Jesus. And the holidays and traditions, they usually involve bringing, affirming meaning and significance. We do that by, we separate, by separating a day to bring a meaning. Whether it be man-made or God-mandated, we separate it a day. Holidays and traditions, like Christmas, usually involve giving and receiving, enjoying. Enjoying what? What are we enjoying? We're celebrating relationships. Knowing likes, knowing dislikes, that comes from close observations. And it comes from close relationships. Close relationships involve honesty and common ground. And this is where it gets difficult <laughs> in the holidays. We try and we suffer to translate these intimate moments and observations into a tangible gift. And we want the recipient of that gift whenever they look at that gift throughout the year, to remember that you cared for them, that you loved them. Some people, they like to give. They just like to give. Other folks, they are overwhelmed. Just the, the idea of having to give. Other folks, they like to exchange gifts. They don't like to just receive. They, they, they want the opportunity. Give me a heads up. I want to exchange with you. Other folks, they're not into that. They're overwhelmed by that. They, 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 don't, they, they see it as a competition. They see it as, who, you, know, I, you know, how could I, I one-up that person, you know? I really want that person to know that it meant something. So how much, you know, what's the sliding scale in buying a, a gift for this person? to let this person know, I care about you. This is something that you like, you see? You didn't, you didn't think I noticed? Some gifts, they're powerful in their simplicity, and simplicity, not cheapness, in their simplicity, because they involve another person's presence, because they involve company they involve is being together like we're, we're here together and because of personal damage and personal bondage and, and a person's brokenness this is beyond certain souls capacity even if they have it all they have a hard time with simplicity they have a hard time with just giving a person time the haves and the half-nots among those folks, they still have that struggle. It was an anointed dean, uh, Deacon Richard Sayers, that told me once, told a group of us, God wants to be near us. Now, I've heard that a lot of times. But when it comes from a brother that you love, <laughs> thank you. It comes from a brother that, that's a man of prayer, and you hear, God wants to be near us. This was, it was like the first time I heard that. Emmanuel, God with us. A child was given to us. This king would be God with us. And we celebrate this 
there's open and unopened gifts I'm sure in your house somewhere sometimes I, I, I go and I find something and say wow wait a minute I forgot I had this don't let that be the thing with the gift that God's given us to Christ we give ourselves to celebrate life love relationships as defined by Father God through his son and how did Jesus define love this is how Jesus defined love in John 3 16 it's Jesus talking he's saying for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life Jesus talking about himself but talking about the Father talking about a gift a meaning a meaningful gift a significant gift how significant it involved life and how does Jesus define life this is what he defines it as John 17 verse 3 now this is eternal life that they, they may know you the one true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent to know to know to spend time the closeness with the living God when he talks about eternal life he's not talking about eternal life that starts after you die that's not that's not what Jesus was talking about he made it very clear that eternal life is something that you experience while you are alive it starts while you are alive it goes on into after you go into your deathbed but it goes on but it starts now he says he spoke that God was not the God of the dead he's the God of the living he made that a point to, to, to the religious faction that eternal life starts now the dead he was making a point to them you're dead in your re religiosity and the dead do not relate <laughs> God relates with the living that's how come he gives us eternal life we were once dead in sin sin is what we held in our hearts that made us shelf God's words in a, in a religion box you categorize things and you take the words of Jesus and you put it in a religion box and that does not apply once I leave this building that doesn't apply once I go to my job that doesn't apply into my personal planning it just doesn't apply it goes into the religion box and that's what sin does it makes us indifferent take the words of Jesus listen in, listen to them closely put them in your heart this gift of God this child that grew for us that gave himself for us we were created to relate with God forever don't let this be an unopened gift in your life take it out of the religion box take it out of the Christmas box <laughs> eternal life and his love starts now starts now God bless you